If you're a busy billionaire, this is the car you want to own because you could commute to work at 240 miles per hour. Such so is the McLaren F1, and so we have the Mini GT version of this, which is 555. That is a brand of cigarettes, and I don't smoke though. I do not promote smoking. Okay, so it's officially licensed, and then oddly, it actually has a Car Lovers Diecast sticker on it. I bought this from AliExpress, so I'm not. I guess they must have a shop there. But how do they get the sticker? Maybe they wrap this. No, but Mini GTs come in this wrapping, right? So I don't know if they have a relationship with TSM model to say, hey, make some stuff just for us. I just hope this... Please don't be defective. Mini GTs are generally pretty good. Yeah, so this is specifically for Car Lover Diecast. They have a website, by the way. Uh, for some reason, I haven't ordered from them. Maybe the shipping cost is too much or something. So here we have magnesium silver color. I feel like this is the color to have. Yeah, seriously, if you're a billionaire, I don't know why you'd be watching this channel, but if you do, you should probably buy one of these things because I'm pretty sure at some point in this car, this car's lifetime, or it's going to sell for like $100 million. I think Lewis Hamilton bought his for like $19 million. So, it's, it's, I don't know, will a car ever be as good as this? Well, it set so many records being a regular production car, although regular is still under 100 units. But uh, if, I had a billion, if I was a billionaire, if I won Powerball and won a few hundred million, I would buy one of these as an investment. I believe Bill Gates actually closed off the Golden Gate Bridge once, just so he could drive this back and forth on it. Alright. The silver does look nice. Let's zoom in here a little bit. Let's keep in mind this is not an expensive model. And uh, the wheels look pretty good. The spokes are not hollow though, so that's not accurate. But I do like that it has gold in here in the centers. Although honestly, that's not on the photographs. It should be black. Uh, there's no brakes on many GTs because again, they're not expensive models. Now what I'm not liking is the gappiness of this uh, tire. It looks too small, all right? The tire slash wheel, I, I don't know. It's questionable if that should be lower or not. And then, uh-oh, the rear tire is a bigger tire than the, the front. Oh, it is bigger. Never mind, never mind. Yeah, you have to look at both. So the rear looks good, right? It doesn't look too gappy, right? But the front, even if I push it up, it looks very gappy. I feel like they could have gone with a slightly larger tire or raised the, the axle a little bit. So... I'm nitpicking. This is not an expensive model again, but I love this car, so I pay attention more on this one. The orange blinker here, or reflector, is nice. It's just printed on with paint. It's not a decal. This clear coat is magnificent. It's very shiny. Look at this. Very cool. Uh, it's a little gappy on the panel lines. I'm assuming it's because eventually they're going to come out with a white or yellow version, and you need a lot of paint to cover up uh, zinc to do that. There's no black paint in the vents here. That's fine. Uh, the treads, yeah, I guess they look kind of modern. I mean, I don't know if you consider the 1990s modern. It's interesting, they have two different screws. Maybe it's because the front is so shallow. Yeah, so they can get more threads on with this, uh, I forget what this was called, this flat top thing. Contrasunk screw, whereas it has a button head. Alright, so the tires are staggered in their width. I do feel like maybe the fronts might be too wide, but... I'm not too concerned. I don't display my models upside down. It's nice that you have a brand, but again, as usual, they don't tell you what the car is. Even though this is the greatest car ever made, some six-year-old kid's going to pick this up and be like, ooh, silver car! And that's all they know. Why wouldn't you educate the next generation of your consumers? Hot Wheels does. They're pretty good at that, right? So I don't know why they wouldn't just mold this into the casting. It would be free. No additional process necessary. Okay, well, let's continue on here. Uh, oh boy, what's up with that? The gold is totally missing the mark there. Uh, well, I might add some silver paint and maybe I'll actually just change those to black centers. Oh, this one's also missing the mark. So that's too bad. So I almost kind of think it would be better if they left it alone. Like, no gold at all. If you can't do it right, uh, you know, just leave it alone. That's easy to add paint to because it's raised. 
The window molding here, yeah, it's raised, uh, very thin, so very nice. There's a little black here, one would have to assume that's the fuel filler, that's the door actuator, looks pretty good. The mirrors are rubbery-ish, the stock is really thick, but yeah, it is a rubbery mirror, so that's good for durability. And then uh, it has a recess, if this was a different color, you could put a paint marker in there pretty easy, or, or paint it, just wipe off the rest with a Q-tip. Alright, nice uh, clear headlight covers, and you have some domed silver headlights, so that's nice. We have the turn signals and the uh, silver running lights here. Okay, so that looks good. Uh, the vent here, it is part of the casting, I'm guessing. Oh no, maybe it's not. It sounds like it's plastic, but it looks like it's part of the metal. But anyways, the vents are painted black, so that's nice, and this does have the bisecting a wing or whatever you want to call that there the divider and then there's a little black paint here why oh you know what I do see it on the front photograph I never even noticed that on the real car there's some tiny little deflectors here maybe for extra downforce or something all right so that's nice and then we have the McLaren badge let me get in on that it is not centered so that's unfortunate here's the center line yeah it's too bad it's not centered. There's also a line here as part of the casting process. That's where the mold split. Okay. A little vent here. Well, that's just plain. No black. Wiper blade is uh, weird. What's going on? Oh, never mind. I thought this was a different plane than that. But maybe it is. It's very thin. It's a very small wiper blade, but it is black, so that's nice. Sorry, it's hard to focus the reflections. All right, um, yeah, a little blemish there, not so great. Uh, there is black paint up here, so that's nice. And then there's also black here for the door hinge areas. Uh, I can't see in the photograph if that's true, accurate or not. The six slots here are very thin. They look pretty good compared to the photos. Uh, the black of the windows is nice. I think the black is on the inside surface as well, so that shouldn't scratch off. Then these slots here are black. This vent here, detail. There are ribs here. I'm not, there you go. And then there's nice black paint in that vent. A lot of other castings from other companies skip that paint there. All right. Um, so the clear tail lights is nice. Much better than paint. Alright, the badging here looks good. Let's see if I can focus on it. I think that's legible. Yeah, look at that. I mean, this model, if you factor in the price, that's really impressive. Now, the unfortunately, uh, there should be a backup light and a reflector here, and those are not in this model, so they skip that. Uh, there's a nice texture here, and then the exhausts are nice, although well, now we know they're separate pieces, and this one is going to fall out. So, I will be back. Well, at first I was thinking I should just crazy glue that in, but if I mess up, and also the vapor is going to make all that stuff look white. So, I'm going to try to, let's open this and see if I can put some glue in from the back side where it can't be visible. That is the beauty of the screwed base. Every brand should do this. I mean, UCC Coffee has screwed bases, and those things come free with a can of coffee in Japan. All right, so similar to the uh, race car, you have the engine stuck to the metal base here. And it's nice, you can uh, obviously paint that up if you want. Let's see about the interior here. And also the construction. There's one rivet holding the whole top end on, so that's interesting. And the melt marks for the, the lights. Um, and the tail lights, yeah, all right. So I gotta pop this in here. I don't know if there's a direction, if there's an up or down. I'm guessing not. Let me look at that. No, I don't think there is. Wow, this thing is so small. Come on. So you might need some tweezers to, to make this happen, but let's see if I can pull this off. No, tweezer time. Alright, so that is in there. 
So you can just add crazy glue if you want, but I have this display UV glue. Seems to work pretty well. It's clear. And I think I could have a chance of uh, removing this if for some reason I wanted to. And But basically, it's not going to have that crazing that crazy glue does. UV light. If you're doing a lot of UV work, you should wear sun, you know, UV protective safety glasses. Because uh, that stuff is really bad for your eyes. It's bad for your skin as well. Oh boy. I'm actually glad that didn't set. That, that stuff is very liquidy. So that went through the hole. I did not expect that. This is an eyelash uh, Q-tip. And look at that. It pulled some black. Hmm. Let me do this off camera. So, look at this. This paint is really susceptible to chemicals. Uh, that's just me cleaning the UV glue off. So it's literally just stripping all this paint off. Uh, luckily it's black, you know. I can just take any black paint and they'll just go over the whole area. But look at that. So... Learn from my mistakes, don't use UV glue on a Mini GT because apparently that's not a really good uh, 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 resistant paint there. I'm sure the clear coat is fine because it's, uh, you know, the silver body is clear coated, but then they painted that black on top of it. So I am going to have to go with crazy glue on the inside. So while the glue is drying, I ended up just crazy gluing all those studs because I don't want the lights or anything else falling out. Even in the front, I added a little crazy glue. Hopefully it won't craze, but in, in there that is. We'll have to see what happens. I also added a little black paint on the edges here on the bottom. Uh, let's look at the interior. So the interior is known to be gray, apparently, and Mini GT is known to have black interiors. Uh, so. I, that's another nice thing about the thing being uh, screwed together. I can go and just paint this whole thing. Uh, the molded details are pretty nice. This one actually has the stick shift, so that's good. Uh, little buttons and all that stuff. The passenger seats, no headrests. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, okay. Steering wheel looks okay. Uh, it looks like this is actually molded in gas pedal, clutch, you know, brake pedal, kind of footrest kind of thing there. So that's nice. Yeah, no complaints about that. So let me come back. So I use Vallejo paints, by the way, because they're water-based. It's a little less caustic than, uh, you know, alcohol-based, which is a little less caustic than uh, petroleum-based. Okay, let's get that in there. As you can see, the interior contains the axle uh, things here. I guess I should add brakes to this too. So I have some 3D printed brakes in there. I actually put putty on the front. I don't want the thing to roll. And for the, I tighten the uh, rear wheels so there's just friction against the side and it actually lowered the ride height which works to my advantage. Uh, but the front I cannot get any higher. I guess I could just drill out or file down that opening but I'm too lazy now. So I think the gray interior is a lot nicer, of course. I put a little silver paint on the engine, but pretty hard to see in there. So this is going to be a mega comparison time, I guess. Uh, can't do the tray of comparison because the LCD is on a plinth. Uh, so that's the LCD, of course. This is uh, Mini Champs or Micro Champs. It's definitely the worst of uh, the, the die cast things here. And then this is a Kyosho, which is actually still okay. It's not as good as the Mini GT, I'm guessing, but we'll, we will find out. <clears throat> if you look at the Mini Champs, it's so low, I don't know, it's, it's, it's very low to the ground. It's, uh, hold on. That is why I don't like rolling models. I put poster putty in all of them. All right, so this is super low to the ground, um, but this proportions are just weird looking. Um, the Kyosho is too high off the ground. It's almost like a sedan, right? So I think Mini GT's ride height probably makes the most sense. It's not an F1 uh, Formula One car, but it's not a, a Toyota Prius either, right? 
Uh, the this has totally black paint for the headlights. This has clear lenses but flat uh, silver paint. This literally has domed headlights. So, and then the badge is simply better. That's gonna be hard to see that I think, but you can just see there's a bump paint or paint app or tampo print and then that actually looked proportionally correct. You can see the venting here on the Kyosho. It looks very narrow and uh, it doesn't come down a lot here either. I'm not sure if this is accurate here. It comes down a lot and is much wider. And this hasn't come down very far either. So this has a colorful interior, multicolor. Uh, Kyosho is just black as well, but the Kyosho is press fit together, so you can't you can't do much about it unless you drill it apart. Kyosho mirrors, too blobby, too rounded. They, these look more like the photographs, in my opinion. Kyosho is skipping the paint, paint, paint in the top vent there. All right. Going to the rear. Painted taillights, painted taillights, Kyosho, uh, the Mini GT has clear taillights, same with the LCD. Uh, the Kyosho does have badging, uh, Mini Champ skips it entirely. Um, so LCD of course is going to have badging, I'm pretty sure it's the best one. So it actually makes sense, you know, uh, chronologically this is how they came out I believe. The Mini Champs came first, probably around the time the real car came out. Kyosho, actually, maybe these both came out at the same time. I'm assuming that must have come out around that time as well. But the Kyosho is simply way better than the Mini Champs. It's just something about the Mini Champs looks like it's too low slung. This looks almost flat. Whereas you can see the roundedness here, a little more round here. Unfortunately, the LCD is a dark color. Alright, uh, wheel wise though. The, ex the Mini Champs actually has hollow spokes, so that's working to its advantage. The Kyosho, well look at the, the Mini Champs also has the same size tire in the back as the front, and that's not cool. So this wheel well just looks huge. Kyosho did it much better. Much, much fatter rear tire, right? And also... I can't tell if there's air between those spokes, but it's deep enough that it looks like it is. Uh, but uh, Mini GT is the only one that actually puts some color in the middle of theirs. But the spokes don't simply look as deep or as realistic as uh, the other two, I think. Uh, LCD, we're going to save that for the... I guess that's the end of these two, because you're really not probably going to buy these. They're so old and inferior. These are the two active brands that you can actually buy, and so this is the real comparison here. So the LCD actually has reflective uh, stickers in the mirrors. Um, you can see the light getting into these taillights better, whereas the Mini Chan I mean the Mini GT is just dark, right? So I almost feel like this they these almost look illuminated compared to those. Uh, the exhaust pipes here are much thinner. They look more like pipes. These are much thicker. You can see the reflector and the backup light in these little slots. Mini GT skipped it. And then uh, top engine area. They're both pretty good. The interior engine of this might be better, but I don't really care about that so much. Uh, look at these wheels. LCD, I think those are hollow spokes. And they also have gold in the middle, which is weird because the real car doesn't. Oh, but this is the XP5, the prototype. It may have actually had gold there. It really says there's a little XP5 thing there. Um, both are pretty good from the side. Uh, I like the Mini GT tires. They look less truck-like. I'm seeing too much of the tread here. It's a fine tread, but it's still, you shouldn't see any tread on a road road uh, tire. But look at the brakes. I mean this thing has much more realistic it has brakes first of all. The Mini GT doesn't. It's simply not in the same price category. But these brakes are actually cross drilled like the real one or have indication of such.
So, the LCD has clear headlights. These are silver paint. Uh, the badge here, I don't know. Let's see. I think they're both good. The LCD one actually is recessed, but I don't think, I'm not sure if that's accurate, if it should be recessed or not. Okay. I feel like, um, it's really hard for the camera to focus on this silver car for some reason. The turn signals, these are very tall looking. These are very thin looking. Uh, it's your call. I, I don't know which is more accurate looking at that front photo. It's hard to say. The vents seem similar. The side vents. This actually comes up more, it looks like. This uh, part of the body. I think uh, this might actually be more accurate. Or maybe it's because this is a dark color. It's hard to say. That venting on the front center. I feel like... Boy, the camera can't focus on two different darknesses. This one comes very far forward, whereas the LCD doesn't come that far forward, so I don't know which is more accurate there. The wiper blades, I guess they both look pretty pretty good. Uh, the vent up there, they both look pretty good. But this, this interior is something else. It's like a suede looking interior, like literally a three-dimensional Alcantara type of uh, material. And then, uh, you know, obviously you saw just the black there. So, <clears throat> I, I think, yeah, obviously, to me, the LCD is much better, but it's also m much more expensive. So, uh, it's most likely going to cost twice as much, if not more, to get this than that. So, it makes sense. If you're on a budget, you don't really care about the greatest car in the world, go with the Mini GT. If you do care about the greatest car in the world, I would recommend the LCD. Alright, the last one is just the Mini GT of the uh, road racing car, the one that made it so awesome. I'm not sure if there's going to be another car that will be as awesome. They could just, you know, be sold as a road car and with some modifications, minor modifications, and go out and win the 24 Hours of Le Mans. I probably should have bought a silver version of that. But obviously I already have a bunch of silver ones, so... Okay. So I naturally ran into some quality control issues. You know, the exhaust thing. It's just my luck. Um, but also the misprinted wheel centers. I feel like they could have maybe just not had the printing at all, seeing how they're not even the right color. Or maybe there were some with gold center knockoffs, but I don't know. Eh, maybe maybe there were because LCD also has gold ones. Anyways, I think for the price of a Mini GT, you can't go wrong. The, the beautiful thing is it's screwed together. You know, you can you can customize it pretty easily, or in my case, fix fix problems. You have a better chance of fixing the problems that you might run into. But on the whole, you know, I don't really run into too many QC issues with Mini GT. I've only had a few out of uh, many, many, so. All right, thank you for watching today, guys. We'll see you if someone else ever makes one of these. I didn't bring out the Scale Mini. It's a resin model, and frankly, it's kind of garbage for the price. You can just look up that thing, that video. I wouldn't recommend it. I would go with LCD or Mini GT. Take care. See ya.